For the 80s, I would probably go with Maison et Coco, perhaps. Um, no, no, Macross. Okay. Um, because it was a defining Mecha series, and the 80s were the decade of Mecha, yeah. you know. Um, and also, Macross does have that um, that breadth that anime in the 80s needed to have. Comedy, drama, action, all those things, all of those. Um, 90s, I'm going to have to, it kind of pains me, but Neon Genesis Evangelion was kind of the anime of the 90s. Um, because it was, it had that darker tone to it, very common from the anime of the 90s. Um, it, but it was also, um, by the 90s, you had, uh, anime fandom had grown to the point where you couldn't just do cute romance series. You couldn't just do, you know, big over the top of action anime. You had to have something more. And Evangelion was definitely something more. Um, um, and also, um, you know, Evangelion totally broke out. Evangelion was the, Evangelion was the anime that Japanese teenagers who didn't watch anime watched. Um, and so suddenly now, you know, people were actually aware of this thing. Um, it also helped American anime fans doing it as well. 2000s? Canon? Probably? Um, because the 2000s were the decade of Moe, um, and, and the slice of life anime. Um, and so that really was the one that everyone was talking about and, 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 and debating. Um, 2010s, I have no idea. Um, because it's always hard to look at a decade that just happened and see what the trends actually were. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure what, how to define the 2010s um, in anime. Um, that was tough for me. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there's, it split out so far. I mean, if I had to pick one just out of my hat, Angel Bees. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, I, Interesting. I mean just, yeah. just out of my hat. Yeah. It's like, Something that kind of, you know, kind of started the path. Mm -hmm. It would be that. Yeah. Um, so, um, if I were to um, uh, change that a little bit, I think the anime that definitely were kind of the the big highlights over the past few decades. Yeah. Um, I would go back and say, um, really, it is uh, original Gundam seventy nine. Yeah. That was, and also Rose of Versailles to an extent, because both of those were the, okay, anime is now telling complex, long-form stories. Right. Um, um, moving on from there, really the next really huge one is Akira, um, because it was adult anime for adults, right. um, and hugely successful. Um, moving on from there, again, it gets a little bit fuzzier, I would say a combination of Cowboy Bebop and Serial Experiments Lane, in the, in the late 90s. Okay, I have a question. Go ahead. Have okay. A question. All right, yeah. Um, <coughs> because um, Bebop is an example of, of a series that was not hugely popular in Japan, but hugely popular overseas. And the international, um, so they made the Bebop movie really for the Americans. Yeah. Um, in, in the sense that they knew that they would be able to, they, um, they knew they would make their money back once this got over to America, right? There would be enough sales. Um, and Lane was experimental in the way that anime at the time was experimental. There was now, um, things had changed so much in, um, in the anime industry that there was not enough space to do weird stuff. Um, and then after that, I would say maybe Ken, Air, Planade, like that whole trilogy of, of Moe series. Um, and then I think Haruhi Suzumiya has been one of the big uh, changing points yeah. because that took Moe and said, okay, now we're gonna take this cutesy trope but tell an interesting story with it. Yeah. Right? And really build something out of that. Um, and it should be pointed out, none of these series were like the first to do any of this usually. They were just the one that everybody saw and talked about. Right? So there's a bunch of yeah. Um 